around the 1st of March, like magic, every year the snow melts, these shallow ephemeral wetlands fill with water, and the birds arrive literally within a day or two of, of the spring melt. This is the place where I've seen the most impressive concentrations of waterfowl that I've ever seen. We can go from a foot of snow and not a bird in sight to having these the snow melt and the wetlands fill with 10,000, 20,000, 50,000, and sometimes half a million in some of these migration areas. The birds that arrive on the breeding grounds early and nest early contribute the most to the fall flight that year. So what we really want to see on our spring migration areas is enough habitat so that the birds can, when they arrive there, there's enough uh, resources to help them survive. But not only that, to get back to the breeding grounds um, really healthy and good condition and ready to breed because we know that those hens are the most successful every year in the breeding cycle. Spring migration habitats are particularly important because waterfowl consume a lot of energy reserves during long migration flights and they need places like this to stop and rest and refuel prior to resuming their northward migration. We've lost 90% uh, of the original wetlands that were here in the Rainwater Basin and along the Platte River a similar story has occurred and so we have a, uh, an urgent need to restore and protect the habitat that waterfowl need to sustain them during migration periods. We look at places like uh, Cheyenne Bottoms uh, in Kansas, uh, McPherson Valley in Kansas, uh, the Rainwater Basin in Nebraska and the Platte River in, in Colorado and Nebraska. And many of those uh, landscapes have seen tremendous wetland loss, so you're concentrating huge numbers of waterfowl into a very small area. And that really sets the stage for competition for food, uh, for disease outbreaks. So we're really in a mode of trying to rebuild that habitat, to put wetlands back so there's sufficient resources, so that as the birds move through that neck of the hourglass, they can make their way safely back to the breeding grounds. These used to be drained cornfields, and in a relatively short period of time, we've greatly increased the amount of foraging habitat through these uh, seasonal and uh, temporary wetlands that, that we work on. What we're focusing on in these migration habitats is to provide the shallow ephemeral wetlands that are so rich in the food resources that birds need to replenish the nutrient and energy reserves that they have lost uh, during long migration flights. Another facet of that is restoring a lot of the basins uh, as well as the river habitat that have been severely degraded over time. Acquisitions and conservation easements are really the ultimate uh, way of protecting these resources for future generations. We're very fortunate in these spring migration areas and in places like Kansas and Nebraska and Colorado that we have a collection of landowners that are passionate about, about waterfowl and they're committed to DU's mission and they're not only helping us uh, fun habitat work in their home states, but they see that connection to the prairies and they're stepping up and helping to fund um, our work on the breeding grounds to really ensure that the source of their birds remains intact and helps protect their investment. They, they sort of get engaged locally, but then support the, the continental mission and the work across the board that it takes us for us to be successful in the big picture. We really couldn't accomplish our objectives in these areas without our, our major donors, our major sponsors. I don't see those donor dollars as dollar signs. To me, that, that's habitat in the long run. My dream, like the dream of, of anybody in DU, is, you know, nothing but wetlands and lots of ducks, and, and it'll happen. I never really considered myself a philanthropist, <laughs> and I still don't. Uh, I just feel like, uh, you know, that's the, the science, all that stuff is very easy to understand. But when it comes to the money, it comes from your heart. And once you, once you realize that that's where it's at, and that's where it comes from, it's very easy. This spring migration uh, in places like Nebraska is one of the greatest spectacles on earth. People come from all over the world to witness uh, this migration. And it's incumbent upon us to be sure that the resources are there so that that spectacle, that ritual, is gonna remain for future generations for years and years to come.